You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. These are my Align Lululemon leggings. Um, they, they fit just right. Um, when you're doing yoga, you really feel like you're doing it naked. Uh, so you should swipe up, use my code, McKenna, 10% off. Thank you. Shall we head to my favorite planet in the galaxy? The planet of good vibes. The planet of good vibes. And lift off at dawn in a new era of American space exploration. <laughs> In approximately five, four, three, two, and one. Top of the morning, folks. Good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Ham Planet Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Ham. And uh, if you're new to the show, very happy to have you. Very thankful to have you, as a matter Aww. of fact. And um, if you're new to the show, I got to preface it by saying that this show is about three things. Good vibes, great people, and glorious stories. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic nurse that we can all say across the United States and across the world, we are very thankful for all of our nurses. Aww. And um, a Mansfield legend. Oh, God. The one and only. McKenna Nicole Matherson. Hello. We're hyped to have her. Let's give it up, ladies and gents. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for... What a um, crowd tonight. I know. Wow. Smooth crowd. McKenna, how are you feeling? I feel... I'm so excited. I feel blessed. I feel good. I feel... I feel all types of vibed up. Those are fantastic (laughs) things. So, to get us started on this evening... Okay. I would like to... uh, to attribute th- to thankful season, hmm. give a uh, quick list of what we're thankful for. Okay. But we go rapid fire, back to back, and okay, it can be this. anything in the world. Okay, okay, okay. Okay? Anything. Okay. You want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. Bagels. Dak Prescott. Wine. Twisted. <laughs> My husband. My daughter. My job. My mustache. Uh, my slippers. My beautiful mother. Wait, can we time out? If yeah. we, if we, if we. Love you, mom. Shout out, mom. I, I love your mom too. What a sweetheart. Um, if <laughs> we, if we stutter or we pause. Oh, are we okay? You yeah, have to take yeah, a, we're going you have to hard. Take a drink. Sure, 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 sure. All right. Sure. The blood of Christ tonight. Mm, communion. Community. Honestly, love. It's community season. It is thankful season. It is. Bless up. It's pumpkin spice season. I'll say it right now. Do you it like is. pumpkin spice? I mean, I don't want to be soft, but yeah, I do. You do. I do. Is that a violation? No. I respect it. It's good. I mean, it's good. I mean, come on. They put that addicting uh, sprinkle stuff on Starbucks. At Starbucks, they put some, they, I see them. They put Mm. some pumpkin something on that. Mm -hmm. And it gets me going. And I come back the next day and I'm like, "Mm, need another one. Oh, wow. It's pretty good. So do you have like a punch card? Do they have punch cards? No, you have your app, right? I think pumpkin spice is some some sort of... uh, it's got some sort of addictive uh, mm. characteristic. To be honest, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, did we have pumpkin spice 10 years ago? That's what no. I'm curious about. We know we did it. It just kind of oh spiced, <gasps> spiced up. Spiced <laughs> up. Okay, so um, we're thankful for so many things on this fabulous evening. Um, McKenna? Mm-hmm. What I'd like to do okay. is, as per tradition, we're gonna 
wind back the clocks a little bit. And I like to always start at the age where I first met you. And you give a synopsis, maybe the cliff notes, whatever you want to call it. I, I like cliff notes. Or okay. you can go full documentary. But um, I met you when I was 15. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> let's just run it back from there. And I got to say, I've done this with three of my best people. Uh-huh. Or not three of my best people. I've, been, I've done it th- on the past few episodes okay where i've met what age i met them at uh-huh and um i well i i met one of them at 18 but uh-huh. i started them all at 15 okay. but we actually you and i did, did actually meet at 15 which is yeah which would, yeah but you're but that would make me 16 though right are you I'm hunter's age to, how I'm old are you seven i'm six months younger than hunter seven six. okay 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 so that's accurate and it was it. it was are you older than Hunter? What are you? Uh, I'm 27. I'm 27. Okay, so we're the same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 15 was right. Yeah. Okay, so it was at Hunter's house. To be honest, my, my memory is very, very. That you, you don't have to recollect that night, but you can recollect the journey. I. You. This is real talk, right? Real talk. Real talk. So to be honest, I mean, you even this is re- this was a recent encounter. It was at Ashley yep. and Garrett's. Um, I'm not saying I met you there. No, that's where at, I mean, first time I seen you in years. Yeah, that I'd seen you in forever. Which was great to see. And, you. and and I didn't say hi because I genuinely thought you didn't remember who I was. What? And you're like McKenna, and I was like, oh my gosh, Petey, hi! Of I course. didn't think you remembered who I was, and then I felt really bad, but then I also felt really cool. Oh well, that's that that well, that's nice of you. I was like, yeah, that's right. Petey of course, of I course, am. I knew you were always so nice back in the day. I mean, shit, I'd be. Well, Hunter paid me a lot of money to be nice to you, so. Oh really? <laughs> Hunter's kidding. gonna love that. <laughs> Hunter's gonna love that. <laughs> How much did he pay? You? I cannot tell you. Wow. This is a. It's it's confidential. Hmm. Honestly, it's okay to be upset with him. No, I never would be. I <laughs> I'll, never I'll, would I'll be. give you the money. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not gonna say no. <laughs> okay, but uh, McKenna, so uh-huh. Mansfield. Mansfield. You attended Mansfield High. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I moved there. I wasn't going to. So actually, so before that, I lived in Arlington, but I was still zoned to Mansfield School or like Mansfield Schools and I um, moved in eighth grade and played volleyball with all of the Mansfield girls like club and so um, where did you go to middle school T.A. Howard baby hey uh-huh and before that Love I went that. to Cross Timbers and I loved every second of it and I went with all my besties there's like at the time well in middle school there was like five of us good girlfriends and when I moved, that was like really hard for me because of course I thought we were yeah. gonna end being besties. And now that that's moving's hard, but it's kind of funny and so melodramatic of me because I literally just you moved like ten minutes away. Yeah, so it was fine. You didn't get shipped off to another state. No, who? who, who what, do we? Did that happen to you? Yeah, <laughs> it did. But we're here and we're doing we great. We are. We are. And um. Doesn't matter if you go the the if you're switching schools, it's the same. Yeah, but it's a um, different world. Yeah, but I did go to Mansfield, and and I still I'm still to this day best friends with those gals. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I I, I I admire that about y'all's friend group. Y'all been tight since you know two th- the early two thousands. Yeah, you know Whitney and Natalie. And I got a lot of respect for that. Oh yeah. So Natalie, I've known her since kindergarten and Whitney since first grade. Isn't that such a great thing? Yes. I love it. It's like um, my sisters. It's really a special thing to think about like how long you've known someone. Yeah. Still know them. Yes. Still know what what's good with them. Mm-hmm. Uh there's a lot of value in that, I feel like. You know? And it's hard it's hard to uh as time as life continues to go on yeah. to give the same energy. I mean, yes. shit, when you're young, 
you've got eight hours a day to go. That'll fart around. Whatever. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about anything. Just sending it. Yes. But, um, yeah. I think friendship and loyalty is something. It's It's got to be, um. You gotta have some structures. You do. Strategery, and as I, George Bush said. <laughs> uh, and I love strategery. It's just such a great word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's honestly <laughs> one of my favorites. Shout out George. But I, I, I think a lot of that comes from, especially Natalie and Whitney, since from day one, they've just always been so upfront and honest with me, and like the person that I am and like hold, and held me accountable to who I can be kind of thing. And absolutely always shot it to me straight. And I love that. And you yourself, McKenna are a straight shooter. Mm-hmm. So might call me Annie Oakley. Ooh. I don't know who Annie Oakley <gasps> is, ladies and gentlemen, but if you know who that is, let us know. Okay. Okay. She's a, <laughs> she's a girl. She's a cowgirl. Who oh, okay. Who well, we're going to figure it out now. Uh huh. Who is she? She's a cowgirl who shoots guns. Is is she in Yellowstone? No, I think she's like a, she, uh, she's way back in the time. She's not in Yellowstone. Oh, okay. I respect it. I thought she. I thought it was. Do you good. watch she's Yellowstone? I I haven't seen it. I know. I haven't either. No, no, no. It's okay. Oh, I okay. I fell asleep the first okay. episode. Whoops. Damn. Me mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Damn. But but I, I I still I believe in it. I'm gonna give it a shot one of these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd be a good character on there, from what I've heard. You fell asleep. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> How am I gonna be a good character? Well, it's like all like people shooting shit and stealing. What? I'm shoot. I'm a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> you could. You could I'm be shooting. A, I'm scooting. I'm booting. You could be a rough rider. I could be a rough rider. I could be a rough rider. I mean, be, I mean, I mean, I'd be the good guy. Yeah. I'd be the good guy. I'd be the guy who helps out, gets gets it taken care of. Isn't that? The guy named Rip? I don't know. What, let's just make our own, <laughs> own interpretation of what we think Yellowstone's about. So Rip is a good guy. There are a couple rough riders. So uh, this is what I've seen. Okay. This is what I've seen. I turned it on. Okay. Saw a couple guys sending it in the cowboy hats. And then um, I turned it on for my mother. Hmm. And right when I turned it on, it was in the middle of that episode. And they were uh, putting a guy... <gasps> Into one of those pavement driveway things that they got at ranches by like the moats where you know they, they got the plastic gate or the metal gate. Uh-huh. A guy putting them in there. And killing them? T- just leaving them in there. They said night night. Night night. And then you stopped watching because it grossed you out or like? No, no, no. I mean, no, no, no. I'm fine. <laughs> but, well, I mean, I just had to go do something i think oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. no that didn't creep me out but that's all i've seen mm-hmm. i need to watch it i'm just not a show person are you, you sure not? i i am i am after like a long long day all right. i want to do is just sit down and watch tv but that's a new thing i didn't start watching i have been a show person at certain chapters so i yeah. I, I feel that it's a whole new thing i used to hate tv i used to hate sitting in the same spot i had to be up moving and it yeah. wasn't until like a probably like a year and a half ago where I started to just like chill out a little bit. What's, uh, what's been the show that had you most like, I need it. <laughs> uh, I know there's, I've had three shows in my life that have made me like, well, I look forward to, <laughs> this is so dumb. I look forward to the bachelorette. Nothing's dumb on the hand planet yeah, podcast. McKenna. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I it's true. Like, okay. The Bachelorette because I usually watch it with my girlfriends and it's like a fun little girls' night. <laughs> Love to see it. I mean, I know that show goes hard for so many people, and I know it's just it's a must have. I love murder mystery shows. Oof. Do we need to talk some murder mystery tonight? Oh, please. I don't I get don't on with know your bad any stuff. murders, murderous men. You don't. You don't like murder mysteries. I'm not against. I mean, I'm not. Uh. I used to. So when Cole and I were long distance and he lived in Midland, I would drive. Oh, he lived in Midland? He did. For for two and a half years. He worked for Chevron for a little bit. Respect. Mm-hmm. I'm and glad he got back. Me too. <laughs> it, well, we're, he was driving from College Station to Midland and that's like a long drive, right? So when I'd go see him, I'd listen to Murder Mysteries to keep me awake. 
like on the long drives. It's a drive. It is, and it's a rough one too. Yeah, hated it. How long did you live there? <laughs> I didn't live there. I just went there because I was dating a lady who oh. moved out there. Oh, okay, okay. Yep, yep. Oh, well, dated was... her for a few years, and uh, yeah, that she was, sweet she of was you out at Midland. Over. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great girl. Oh, great that's, gal. That's sweet of you to say. Oh yeah, oh yeah, great person. So, so good terms. So then, after uh, murder mystery shows. I also really like The Mass Singer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Honestly, those are intriguing. Honestly, every time I watch one of those, I've got sucked in. Wait, really? I've seen them. Yes. I mean, I mean, pretty, like, big stars are on there. Yeah. I have a question. And they're shocking. Yeah, like, um, well, freaking Little Wayne was on there. Um, T-Pain won. I love Lil Wheezy. Uh-huh. Um, Leanne Rhymes won. What a won. gangster. Still. What'd you say? What a gangster. Little that Wayne. Is, that is true. Um, and who else? Uh, Dwayne Wade was on there. Not Dwayne Wade. Um, Dwight Howard was on there. And Unit. His shoulders are so large. They got smaller, though, because he got off the steroids. Oh, thank goodness. Ugh. They looked like basketballs. It was impressive. You're I right. mean, we, we, you got you to gotta respect it. I mean, <laughs> Dwight Howard was a freak of nature yeah. back when he was on steroids. That was true. Um, Dwight, just come clean, brother. Like, we get. And now a word from our sponsors. Howdy there, ladies and gents. It's your good friend, Commercial Break Peter. Here to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Unify Commerce. Say it with me now. Unify Commerce. Yes, guys, that is spelled U-N-I-F-I commerce.com. Guys, Unify is in fact my company, and I thought I'd go ahead and plug them on here so you guys can know a little bit of what I do outside of having a great time on the podcast. Guys, Unify is a social technology company that simply helps other companies take their social presence to the next level. Simple as that. And the primary service I want to highlight is professional video creation. Guys, if your company is in need of an exceptional video that shows what you do, why you do it, how you do it, and why it is so valuable, then Unify is here to help. And Unify can create an exceptional advertisement that can really help build awareness and drive sales for your company. We have been in business since the summer of 2018. And helping businesses grow and capitalize on the opportunities that social presence can offer is something we love to do. So if you need a next level video, you need a next level team on your side, and that is Unify. So guys, go ahead and visit unifycommerce.com if you want to learn more. And if you want to inquire about working with us, simply go to the work with us tab and we would love to connect. Anyways, y'all, back to the show. Dallas Cowboys or Texas Rangers? Uh, Texas Rangers. Never been to an NFL football game. Ooh. Threw out the pitch, the first pitch at a Ranger game. Just letting you know. McKenna, okay. Story time. Mm-hmm. McKenna, when did we throw out the first pitch at the Texas I Rangers was, game? I was, I was 16 years old. Uh, my mom used to volunteer for the Alzheimer's Association. And love that they asked her to do it, and she said no. And she said, McKenna, do you want to do it? I want my little girly to do it. Yes, hell yeah. Uh huh. So I did it, and I ran out there like a goomba. Did you get a good pitch? Yeah, I'm like made it, but my pitch was kind of a titty baby pitch, but it still made it to the mound. Honestly, if it makes it, you're you're in the clear. Yeah, I made it. The, the worst is like when it, you know, hits someone behind <laughs> you or when it like. I would have been mortified. <laughs> I would have asked my parents to leave the game. It's happened. Oh my gosh. It's ha- like there's been you pitches. Seen it? Well, there, I haven't seen you. Could I see yours? No, no, no. No, no. I just have, have a photo. It? You All you have is a photo? Uh huh. There's a video somewhere. There is, but my parents weren't technologically inclined. I, the Rangers got it. I know, I, I know people. Call your guy. I'll have my guy talk to your guy. <laughs> okay. And we'll get it scored on. Okay, I love it. 
Okay, so Rangers, Cowboys. Mm. Okay, peanut butter or jelly? Ooh, peanut butter because I'll eat scoops of peanut butter before I run if I'm hungry. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Jello or gravy? Jello. Batman or Superman? Batman, I feel like Superman is kind of like, I just get weird vibes from Superman. Respect. Snow White or Cinderella? Snow White, because she's more like outdoorsy. Love that. Roses or sunflowers? Mm. Sunflowers. I like it. Sunflowers go hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this game. This Mi- is- Miami or Costa Rica? Costa Rica. But Miami was, is incredible too. Um, I had to give it a shout out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Are you good? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Holy shit. Uh, we, we, we're <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do I need to get my inhaler? I have one. You got one? I have sports induced asthma. It's in my purse. Same. <laughs> Honestly, I love a good inhaler. Mm-hmm. It's good to just have one around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know if I need it, but I got it and I use it. I use mine. Oh, show. Well, you have a freaking small airway, so you need it. Honestly, I don't need it. Honestly, it, gets, is, it gets me charged up. I'm shook. That abuterol. Mm-hmm. That, it, it makes your heart speedy? Uh, I'll be fired up in bed. Yeah. Oh, God. Woo. I'll just do a jolt of it after I cough one time, and I'll just oh, be one like. One time. Well, you shouldn't take good it. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Continue. It's. More okay. this or, one more, two more this or that. This is fun. Yeah, I mean, we can go more than two. Look, I'm like shaking. I'm like ready to answer. Like, I'm on top of it. Snowstorm or rainstorm? Rainstorm. Thunder or lightning? Thunder. <laughs> that was a softball. Chicken Express or Canes? Canes, but I love freaking corn nuggets. Chicken Express. I gotta go Chicken Express. Chicken Express, homegrown Texas brand. The chicken started giving me indigestion. Canes, Okay. Oh, well, there, oh, yep. That's sorry. I brought up a chicken question. My bad. <laughs> okay, off the chicken. Is, is ham that, is ham on the menu? I love bacon. Okay, we love bacon. Mm-hmm. Okay, so bacon or honey ham? Bacon. That was the easy one as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Star Wars okay. or Harry Potter? Harry Potter. I told you, space freaks me the F out. I understand. I understand. I mean, it's a scary thing. (laughs) It's a never-ending galaxy. Um, Leonidas or Achilles? Achilles. Makes you fast. Wait, are you talking about the the, the (laughs) tendon? That was witty. I'm talking about the Greek. I know. It was a play on words. Okay. But you know who... Yes, Greek mythology. And Leonidas is... Don't know exactly what he did, but I know he's in Greek <laughs> mythology. McKenna, this helmet here that is mounted, officially mounted to the center of the Hand Planet podcast is a Spartan Leonidas helmet. This is the third person you've asked if I knew, and I said no. That's okay. That's okay. No, you're unless you hit 11, you haven't hit the record. I'm, I'm so thankful that I'm here because I really feel like I'm becoming smarter. I hope I... I I feel the same. Okay, continue. Sorry, but yeah, Leonidas was the king of the uh, Spartan Empire, mm. and that's is that, that who Gerard helmet. Butler played in Three Hundred? Yes. Wait, really? Yes. Okay, so I know who that is. That's who he is. So we were actually doing a this or that with my husband and a couple of our like friends couples. Yeah. yeah. And we were doing like a this or that of like my example was okay, Margot Robbie or Scarlett Johansson. What's your take on that? I'm trying to, I'm trying to refresh who Margot is going, Robbie is. Again. What? I think it's a blonde girl in Wolf of Wall Street. Yes. Okay. I'm just making sure. Her. Okay. Okay. Hands down. Yeah. So I was present. Ryan Reynolds is my celeb crush besides. He's a hot guy. Besides Charlie Hunnam. But then. I don't know they, who that is. That's okay. I know Ryan Reynolds. So then. Um. Somebody brought up the 
somebody brought up a Leonidas in 300 yeah. were yeah. their words. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's Gerard Butler. And I didn't realize what I was saying. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's Gerard Butler. I would so spank Gerard Butler. And my husband was like, what? And I was like, whoopsie. It's just a spanking. You did a spanking. I'm like, woo. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I didn't even that, know what to say. That's not horrible, but I get it. I wouldn't allow it either. <laughs> uh, freaking Gerard Butler's hot. Continue. Um, these are honestly like straight up off the dome. So These are good. These are good. I like this. Purple or pink? Purple. Pink's too girly. Kit Kat. Or Reese's? Reese's. Sonic or Dairy Queen? Dairy Queen. Leg day or upper body? Leg day. Hate upper body. Hate it. That's an easy question, I feel like, for a gal. Really? Are some girls like, oh, I hate leg day? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of girlfriends who just... The stick? Yeah. Hate to see it. Mm. 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 Um, podcast or movie? Or actually, that's not a fair. That's not fair. That's not a fair. That's not Why? the same. That's not the same. It's podcast or radio? Podcast. I See, don't think fair. I've listened to uh, radio since 2012. Damn, podcast taking over. For sure. Hondo P. You are taking over. You are, McKenna. As a you heard fact. it here first. Ham Planet is taking over. I love to see it, mm-hmm. McKenna. That really means a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Best podcast I've ever been on. <laughs> you heard it here first. Li- <coughs> you heard it here first. That was a good radio for- voice. Ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> it more, more. was McKenna. Mm. And it was her claiming. Mm. That this is the best podcast she's ever been on. Love. You love to see it. Cheers. Love to see it. Love to see it. Where did you guys start saying love to see it? Uh, it's something I started saying, honestly, in 2013. Oh, wow. So it's like aged? Yeah, I've had a lot of entrenched vocabulary into the brothers. Mm. So you're the creator of the brothers? Uh, <laughs> I... I have a knack, I'd say. For creating groups? <laughs> yes, but also words. Uh, you said, wor- you words, said words, right? Creating words. Okay. And, and uh, implementing them within friend groups and making them the norm. I love that. That's a special talent. Such as brother. Such yes. as senor. Mm. Such as furta. Mm-hmm. Such as, um, I mean, you've heard a variety of them. Yeah, the those crowd. are the ones that I've heard. Yeah, you've heard them. Those yeah. are the those are, you know, my Nobel Peace Prize winners. It's beautiful. You're Gr- so Grammys. You're so creative. I don't know about that, but I mean, it's uh, it's it, it's good to have some common words you can use with friends. Mm. Like, what do you use with your ladies? What's a word? The squad hears it all the time. You'll use it. Hey, sister, or... Um, I used to call everyone girly pops. Girly pops? <laughs> but that died down. Um, I like that, though. Why did it die? I don't know. It was just old. Overused. Um, I think now I also use... I'm trying to think of what else we say. I specifically say that's cute a lot. Or Damn, like, that saying hits hard for some people. That's cute? Yeah, it used to be way more hurtful. Why? That's cute. Uh, that's literally what I'll say. I'll be like... Okay, honest- it used to, though. You know, like it used to have a little bit more <sighs> sting yeah. to it. Yeah. That, well, I say it like in a sarcastic tone. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say that a lot. Um, but then we... I think what a lot of my girlfriends say now is like XOXO. Like, okay. That's so nice and girly. XOXO. Y'all are just so nice. Okay, love you, XOXO. And we try and, like, goofy, we're goofy, we bring it back to illy, dumb stuff. I love it. Mm. That's it. That's all I can really Girls are about. nice to each other. Most of them. What'd you, girls are nice? To each other. You know, I'd like to think so. You've I got actually, a good, nice group, but it's been I do. sculpted and 
you know, mm-hmm. the, you cut some of the It's all about it's all or, about knowing our Enneagram. Or uh, yes. Yes, Enneagram. Enneagram. And speaking of the Enneagram, let's dive right into the results. So yeah, What was yours? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss McKenna, uh-huh. who is a health expert, <laughs> a caretaker, and a lady who cal- who helps keep lives thriving, informed me, Peter, you must taketh thine test of the Enneagram. I sure I did. And McKenna, could you please explain to the kind ladies and gentlemen out there what an Enneagram is, uh-huh. what it's for, okay. and why I had to do it. So this Enneagram is kind of like the most recent personality test. Um, it There's numbers one through nine, and it kind of tells you what your personality is like, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. And there's stuff like all across the board about it. But then you can also be in an unhealthy state of your Enneagram. So you can be like, so I'm a two wing three, but sometimes when I am in my unhealthy state, I'm in like an, another number. Um, and it's just really interesting because I think specifically not only like in relationships across the board, such as um, whether it be romantic or like in the workplace, it really helps such as when I was in training for my job, I had a, you have preceptors who like are training you. Why are you, why are you smiling? Cause I'm a two wing three. You are? Yeah. Where did the dogs go? To the pound. Oh. Hell yeah. I don't even know what it means, but that means whatever we took, we got the same. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. So it's like a character analysis. Yeah. Let me read it for you. Um, well, let me explain this. Holy shit. You're a so, two wing three. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was smiling at. Cause that, that was like, yeah, that, that's exact. There's a variety of results you can get. Yes, there is. And so it kind of just tells you specifically in the workplace, I think anybody in training should take it. And if you have, if you are like a preceptor or you are somebody who's training somebody, you should take it as well. Um, Because I think it would be very beneficial to the learning process and to the brain and all that jazz. Because say you have a really crappy preceptor or a really crappy teacher um, who doesn't understand the way that you learn and understand like how you take criticism or anything like that, right. you can take it very negatively and it can impact your learning process. Hell yeah. Which I can honestly, impact- I like that. That, that. That's a good way to put it and explain it to others is like, it's good to understand this so that you can explain to other people how you work. Yes. Yes. And it- what's good for you, what you, what you need. Yes, I agree. Okay. You ready for this PD? Yes, I'm so right. This is, this, I'm into this. I'm a science guy. Okay. All my bros, they know I'm Dr. Vibes. <laughs> well, look them up. All right. So a two. Shirt's all right. coming soon. I'd buy one. Dr. Vibes, uh, scrubs. Yes. Doctor, one, could you imagine? That'd be kind of silly goofy. Onesie scrubs. <laughs> yeah. Furry. <Okay. laughs> yeah. That'd be dope. You got a furry fetish? Is that what they're called? Furries fetish? I'm actually, I'm not a big furry guy, but I know other people like some furry. <laughs> That's on open fans, right? No, no, no. No only fans here. None of oh, that. Oh, wait. Only fans. Only fans. Oops, McKenna didn't know what only fans <laughs> was tonight. All right. All right. Real talk. All right. Real talk. So real two, talk. Here we are. You are the lover or helper. Do you say you like to help people? Yes. All right. The That's why, the, why I got the podcast. No, Leave so no true. story left untold. I, I freaking love that. The twos are oriented to help others. They are warm and perceive the needs and feelings of others. They are more attentive to the needs of others and tend not to take care of their own. Yeah. I'm dying on the inside, but I love everyone. <laughs> okay. They give it all and have difficulty receiving. They avoid asking for and receiving help. They feel guilty saying no to others or petitions. Is that accurate so far? Yeah. <sighs> Yes. I need you to be honest. Yes, I'm being honest. It hurts. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, it's literally like spot on. It scares okay. me. Okay, okay. See it. Love it. Love to see it. Back to the show. I have to listen. Okay. And I love to listen. Okay. And I know that is something that's very valuable to me. Okay, love it. Or that. very uh, 
outspoken person. I don't want to mm-hmm. say outspoken. I try not to be. Mm-hmm. But I try and use my words precisely, but also not hold back, which is a fine line to teeter. Okay. Just wait for this. This is going to hit you hard. Okay. Okay. Bazooka to the chest. So Here we posit- go. Your positive characteristics. You're helpful, affectionate, intuitive, happy, and warm. They know what others need. They're understanding yet don't impose, and they know how to listen, um, be generous, and they're very demonstrative. All right? However, your character defects or weakness, you can be imposing, invasive, and demanding. Do you agree with that? Be honest. That's it? No, no, no. No, no, no. I want more. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want all this shit. Okay, okay. They help others in order to feel loved and recognized. They tend to be exhausted physically because of their comings and goings and helping everyone. They tend to be an emotional dumping ground for others. They can help others financially without checking in if it's within their need within their means they're people pleasing and possessive so possibilities when maturity sets in they're well adjusted expressive extroverted they help others feel better yes i feel like you're pretty expressive and what do you think ladies and gents <laughs> let us know swipe up swipe up bitches <laughs> okay not added- bitches sorry we'll kind be, uh, people kind people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i need to you know all right, attitudes that cause toxic, toxic relationships. This is what I'm saying. Are you ready for? I cause that. No, just wait. Hell no. This was this was this was something that really actually like was a slap in the face to me because I like wouldn't admit. Wait, it said myself. toxic relationships. This is attitudes that cause toxic relationships. I haven't read them yet. Wait, 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 wait. Is this under R two wing three? Yes. Are you ready? Wait. So this is. This is something that we possess. That we... According to the... According... Science. <laughs> the test. Okay, yeah. You're being silly. The scientist. Thing. No, 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 no. I'm in. No, 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 no. I think you're being funny. Like, you're making this fun. Was, well, well, not being funny. I'm... I'm oh, I'm, yeah. Being serious. Okay. Okay, serious. Well, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> like, I'm... All right. Okay, listen. Attitudes that cause toxic relationships. Jealous. Possessive. Prideful. They don't need anything from anyone. It is too hard for them to ask and receive help. They act as victims slash martyrs. To be honest, if you want to be vulnerable here, when I'm being super melodramatic and maybe have a little too much to drink, yep. I can I can I can be melodramatic and be like super like I martyry. I don't need you. I'm fine. Oh yeah, yeah. And then later on I'm like, I needed your help. It's so dumb. Well, well, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I experienced that as well. <laughs> I actually, I, I, I have the um, confidence to, <sighs> yeah, fuck it, vulnerable. To be honest, sorry, I, no, I'm, I'm not, not trying to cuss. No, I'm cuss, trying to be a cuss good. All you want. I'm trying to be a good, good old Southern man. You know what? A good old Southern man is somebody who is true to themselves. Be true to yourself. <laughs> You're right. We get it. I'm just trying to be funny. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny, Petey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I lost my train of thought. Where were oh, no. we? Okay, okay. One more thing. They frequently say what makes them the happiest is helping others. I am available for whatever you need. You say I'm available for whatever you need. You said that to me three times today. I didn't say I'm available for whatever you need. You said, I said no rush. No, no, no. You said you said whatever today when I got here. You said what what do you, whatever you need, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I think I said come whenever you want. No, I'm not talking about before. I'm talking about here. You were trying to make me feel very comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. Like ask. I, I said ask whatever you need, or, or let or do whatever <laughs> you need. Bottom line is that you were trying to make me feel comfortable being here. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, what are your thoughts I'm about this? There's still some others. I'm a big comfort guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Quit. Quit reading it. It's going too deep. Okay. I'm feeling like I am the enneagram. Do you really agree with this or not? No, I I agree with it, everything. Okay. I agree with everything. I read my I husband's his, and he was like, "I do not believe any of that shit." I get that on my face. Well, you, it depends on how you take success. You got to take the one thing is like. You know, McKenna, you sent me the test, mm-hmm. which, you know, for me, I'm a guy, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see what my shit is. And I just want to know like straight up, but 
say you're an employer. Say you're Microsoft okay. and I'm trying to be in a security executive yeah. who's managing like private data. Mm-hmm. I'm going to answer the questions to tailor them to the responses that I think they want in an oh, individual to do that job. Okay. So... So you say so you're saying you didn't answer it to No, no. I answered it to my personality. To okay. a T. Okay. To a T. Okay. Even ones where I was like, hmm, is that really me? Mm-hmm. I went back and be like, no, this is really me. Okay. Yeah. My point with the Enneagram is I just had a preceptor who was very uh, blunt and not gentle like if there's something that i need to prove on i'm all about growing and i want you to tell it to me so i can fix it right right but there's a way in telling me constructive criticism just because i so value words and how you say it and 90 percent of uh expression is physical yeah is uh like body language? Body language. Yeah. Body, that's what I'm looking for. And the way that it was executed really impeded my learning process. And I think it set back my like training for a couple of weeks or so. Oh, yeah. And because it, impe- it, it made me not believe in myself and be confident in who I was and like what Which I was capable of doing. Which that fucks up everything when it does. someone does that. It it's does. It's the worst. That, it's a horrible thing. If a yeah. teacher does that, they're not a good teacher. A, yeah, well, yeah. But it was really cool because when I left the job. It's a hard hit, but it's true. Yeah. You always got to make your student feel good. Yes. If they don't feel good, if your student or your child or anyone you're teaching anything doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. like, meaning if they are sick, meaning if they are tired, meaning if they are not healthy, if their nose is running. Yeah. They ain't gonna, they're not going to learn. They're not going to succeed. Yeah, because I think there's such thing as a, like a psychological barrier of fear or a psychological barrier of like any negative vibe that will impede your learning process and your growth process. 1,000%. Stop it. <laughs> Telekinesis. I <laughs> love it. But I think that's so true. And I think that's some something that always needs to be factored in mm-hmm. to the way people... Uh, carry themselves and always reminds me of this saying that one of my good friends shout out to aaron this guy shout out the guy the north carolina guy oh i love north carolina he's a he's a hell of a guy love the trees there he reminds me that every conversation you're having with someone no matter who they are no matter where they're from no matter what they do no matter what their background is no matter what you ask them yeah their response is them putting forth effort yes not just in words, but in the way they're expressing themselves. Mm-hmm. And it ain't, it ain't easy. No. It ain't. Mm-mm. It's tough. Yeah. For anyone. Mm-hmm. And there's obstacles, barriers, demons, whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. for everyone. And you got to always respect it and love it and love to see it. Yeah. He's so wise. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Goose <father. laughs> So anyways, McKen- that's my Enneagram talk. I'm sorry. McKenna, I think it's awesome that we are a two and three. I think that means we're good people. I I would like to believe so. There's some other greasy options on there, but we didn't get those. No, we don't need to. Yeah. We actually were in the category of, I'd say the, the positive takeaways is we are go-getters. We want to take care of people and we want people to feel happy and yes. we'll die to make them feel happy just because we want their happiness over our which can be care. negative for us because that's going to make us feel tired and depleted yeah i don't sleep i've never i haven't slept because really you're just out there serving night. everyone right honestly i love a good night of sleep do you get eight hours hell i haven't had eight hours since i was 12 what yeah how many hours do you get four five shut six, the f up six max Six? Max. Why? Problems. Okay. We can take it offline. Patreon. Mm, got <laughs> no, it. No, no, I really, I'm just, I don't, I have a, I don't know. I just don't sleep enough. Don't do it. You know that shortens your lifespan, right? Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I don't know. I just wake up and I'm ready. You're ready to go. 
really so it's honestly, not like you can't go to sleep it's like you just wake up and you're like ready to hit the town honestly yeah when i wake up i feel like i have to do something so you kind of have this overlying like anxiety to you it's not anxiety it's um it's a it's 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 like hey you just woke up this is gonna make you feel good go do this go walk go work out you work out in the morning yeah when i wake up dang immediately so does cool i'm like Egh. it's it's not optimal for the hormonal system yeah. and the bodily functions but <laughs> it's not like i'm not i'm not talking shit in that pissing i'm talking like just everything optimized hmm. the brain the heart everything okay but um if you do it in the morning you accomplish one of the first major tasks of the day, which is a physical task. I, I get that. I've heard about that. You choose five things when you wake up in the morning. And then if you accomplish, even if it's like eat breakfast, that goes against one of your tasks and you feel accomplished throughout the day or whatever. Some eat breakfast shot. is a good one. Some shout like that. Always eat breakfast. I'm a big component of breakfast. I'm breakfast, breakfast girl. girl. Yeah. McKenna. Stop. That's a fourth time. Breakfast girl. Yes. I love it. McKenna, I think it's time for some would you rathers. Love this. I like these fun games. Bun up up Let's do that again. Let's harmonize. You do that and I'll say a hi. You say bun up up But do it in your voice. But say three, two, one. Three. Three. Two. One. Bun up up Dang. Okay, hit, it. hit me with it. McKenna, would you rather sip gin with Ryan Reynolds? Or shoot tequila with Dwayne The Rock Jen with, Johnson. Gin with Ryan Reynolds. Love a good gin drink and love me some Ryan Reynolds. I, I knew that one from the get-go, honestly. Yeah, you did. We hey, just I'm taking The Rock. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The Rock is the, the number one unit in the world, and I like tequila. He is a big unit. So you, I'm on the opposite. I'm, I'm allergic. Not, I sneeze. You can sneeze. No, no, I'm I'm allergic to tequila. To, you need a tissue? To, to tequila. No, I don't I have tequila. To, I got lavender, te- uh, lavender napkins. No, no, no. I'm just saying I'm allergic to tequila. <laughs> oh no, oh no, we're sick. Rick, no, we're not sick. <laughs> we didn't get anything from the pandemic. Wait, what? What was that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, we next question. are on question number two. Love it. McKenna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would you rather hunt and butcher your own meat? Okay. Or never eat meat again? Hunt and butcher my own meat. You go kill a bear. Yeah, I mean, I, I killed a deer. They're the same thing, right? <laughs> you got a deer? Yes. You got, you got, you got your one. I literally got an axis. And it was cool. Yeah, His McKenna, antler you're was. Bad. Yeah, I'm freaking country. Yeah. You fucking killed an animal. I did, and I cried. Took it out. I actually cried, actually. Wait, was it? It was sad. Hard moment. Only because, only because uh, I shot it. I thought I was. I mean, you're supposed to shoot like right behind its. Front. It's a lot. You're supposed to get its lung, right? Uh, or its heart. Or its heart or its brain. And just behind the the. You front. want a fatal shot so it doesn't yes. run. You right. I got a fatal shot, but I think I shot at an angle, um, and I think the bullet went to spinal cord, so was he was paralyzed, death. and so he was like convulsing on the floor, and like, it just made me really sad. Honestly, McKenna, don't feel bad about being sad about that. That's sad. Yeah. Like, straight I, up, that's sad. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, but, any but animal. It, I mean, it, shit, I'll, if a squirrel's doing that, I'll fucking be But the meat was really sad. good. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. Like, Axis meat is really tasty. Well, I guess it's venison. Axis venison, whatever. Whatever country people say. McKenna, country girl, y'all. Mm-hmm. I did not skin it, and I did not gut it. But you, but you I shot blasted it. it. Uh, hell yeah, I did. Finally. I've been trying to for like five years. McKenna, that's respect. Yeah, I was I've really happy. I've got an Alaskan bull elk. Unfortunately, not shot by me. What? Not harvested by me. Oh, then how'd you get it? Bought it off eBay. I would love that. 200 bucks. That's nice. That's a lot cheaper than going to ship one. 
That is very true. Unless you win the lottery of hunting. I bought it when I was 22. Money things. Honestly. Priorities. It was a little eBay purchase. Semantics. Yeah. It looked good in the living room. Mm. But it's an Alaskan bull elk. It's it's a it's a beast of an animal. Mm. Elks are crazy. <laughs> Yo, yeah. So that's a cool that's a nice addition. Where is it now? It's in my I'll show it to you right okay. after the pod. Okay. He was in here, but he took up a lot of the studio. Yeah, that makes sense. He had to be mounted near the center of the wall because his uh, horns would hit the top. Oh, wow. Large, large, large bull elk. Oof, jeez. Yep. Yeah, beast of an animal. God bless the man who got him. God bless. All right. McKenna, would you rather walk... Ooh. Ooh. Uh, (laughs) Never mind. No, no, say it. That one's tough. Okay, say it. Okay. Would you rather walk in on your parents or have them walk in on you? Um, walk in on my parents because I think I actually did that when I was younger. Okay. Love so I've been there it. and it was fine. Or don't love this. Uh, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have seven fingers on each hand or seven toes on each f- foot? Probably seven toes on each foot because you can cover it up with tennis shoes. If I had seven fingers, I would take that. Really? You could do so much more. You could. There is a football player who has six fingers and he, he like... That's for sure. I think he plays for Kentucky. Ladies and gentlemen, you if you know this six fingered player, put his name, tag him in the comments below. I really think he does. And Kentucky? it's pretty cool. And he like is inspiring all these little kiddos that have extra fingers. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, you can do anything. You sure can. He's got a good point. Yeah. But you would have seven if you chose this one. That's true. Okay. Yeah. yeah respect. So you're going. You were trying. I, to, I for sure go toast. It. You want to hide well, it? Well, I mean, I'd have the option to hide it. You, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be that seven-fingered girl. No, I could. I would own being a seven-toed girl. Your Instagram would be seven-finger, like <laughs> seven-finger girl. Uh-huh. Swipe up. Wait, actually, maybe not. That'd be yeah. Seven-toed girl. Seven-toe. Lucky, lucky, lucky toe seven. So this is the thing. I feel like. One thing that makes us exceptional specimens is humans. Mm-hmm. And I'm taking this down the evolution Love route. It. Not I'll, too yeah. far, but no, we can just a little bit. Um, if we had seven fingers, think about how much you could accomplish. You could type much faster. That's true. I think you might get more cramps on your typing stance. Well, you would. You'd have more muscles. So you'd have to drink more pickle juice. Yes. <laughs> if you have seven fingers, you need pickle juice. Okay, continue. I think that's our conclusion. Continue. <laughs> Next question. McKenna, would you rather... Wait, no, no. Go down the evolution route. What were you going to say? You're just saying that we could type more and do things, do more things? Yeah, with I'm it? just saying. I think there's advantages to seven fingers. I agree. Okay. Respect. Respect. Would you rather have super sensitive taste buds mm-hmm. or super sensitive hearing? Uh, that's probably? weird that's a weird thing that's hard to kind of uh grasp imagine mm-hmm. you know I, what i'm saying but i will say super sensitive taste buds because i that means you can experience more flavor there's a lot of shitty food we eat that's like <sighs> not that good but mm-hmm. if the taste buds are advanced then you probably wouldn't eat it or they'd be good they make it even better yes because you're yeah all palates of the tongue every palate you know what's weird this is kind of related but with wine tasting when you go to wine tasting and you're trying to figure like oh this has hints of the blah, 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 whatever right but there's different on your tongue there's different like quadrants of what you taste oh yeah that's wild to me i i saw a chart of that yes yeah a weird okay continue Sorry. i like I, I i like it i love it mm-hmm. i like it. i love it mckenna mm-hmm. <laughs> would you rather sleep in a doghouse Okay. Or let stray dogs sleep in your bed. Hmm. I'd probably sleep in a dog house. Yeah, me too. I don't want them messing up my bed. Uh, sure. Honestly. These are good questions. I love dogs, but don't be ripping my bed up. No. Okay, McKenna. Last one, best one. Okay. Are you feeling good? I'm feeling right and tight. 
are your vibes at all time highs? 1000%. Are you They're- ready for a legendary question? Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. McKenna, would you get rather him. never get a cold ever again or never be stuck in traffic ever again? Oh, gosh. <laughs> this might be a hot take or maybe a cold take. I don't know. Hot, cold, we'll take it. I would I would take being cold, uh, having a cold over being in traffic. I hate freaking traffic. So you, you want to go no more traffic? No more traffic. Because I kind of like the way my voice sounds when I have a cold. Are you one of those people who's like, I'm sexier when I have a cold? Well, to be honest. That's a, that's a new phenomenon. People are starting to think that. So they're trying to get sick. Well, it's because they have a raspy voice. I think. Yeah. And to be honest, I have self-diagnosed nodes. So like. Sure. I've just now noticed it because when I go to weddings, I'll like sing to every freaking song and I'll like scream at the top of my lungs. And then I come back and I have no voice. Right. And I love it. I feel like I feel like Sophia Bush. You know who that is? Or Scarlett. Or Scar Jo. She has a raspy voice. Oh, uh, she does. She mm-hmm. does. She does. I, I, I know Scar Jo. Mm-hmm. But, um. I like it. You know, I you like don't want to be getting sick. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, no. But, but I, you but I it. hate traffic that much because it is dumb. In Houston, traffic is bleh. It's you, rough. It takes 45 minutes to go 10 miles. It's tough. Maybe even less than that. Yes. That was a good question. It is. It was. Hmm. And it is a fantastic evening, McKenna. It was. To say the least. Yes. To say the least. McKenna, what is one thing you're thankful for? I know we said about 20 at the beginning of the show, but let's just get one just solid one that maybe makes people hungry. To be honest, I'm really, really, really thankful for my health because I can, in my job, I feel like I keep on saying in my job, but in my being profession, a PA, yes. Um, I saving saw, lives. You could just say that yeah, I saw, while I'm saving lives. <laughs> I saw a lot of death um, that was like not even self-inflicted. I saw a lot of self-inflicted death, but I also saw death where it was random things to where you could be in a random place in town and then somebody shoots a gun at you and then you lose your voice and you have to have a trach. So it made me really thankful for my voice metaphorically, but also physically. Um, and for health and just health in general, because it is so fleeting, so freaking fleeting. And I try and like thank the Lord every single day for my health because, and like, even if I'm working out, that's also that's it, a blessing. Yeah. It sounds so silly, but like when you so really true. think about it, it's like a miracle in itself that we do crazy things and we still have the ability to like work out and run long distance or like lift the amount of weight we do. when there are people who can't do that or people who can't sing or talk or people can't yeah move, move. It, and this sounds so gross too, but like, freaking going to the bathroom like a normal person like it's a joy it's a treat it's a pleasure and honor it sounds silly but it's like i'm i don't know i I, (laughs) it's so it's spot on i don't know that's what i'm thankful for what about you i think um i think that's a beautiful thing again i think one thing that is something that everyone can always do is think about you know certain things that they have that others don't yeah because that's the hard thing to think about because i feel like you know we're naturally drawn towards what we need what we want what we want to reach Mm -hmm. but um what am i thankful for i'm thankful for friendship i'm thankful for memories that will last a lifetime Mm -hmm. from so many people Mm -hmm. including you including you indeed sweet including you indeed because it has been a fantastic trip through the galaxy of good vibes love it and um we've just had a fantastic night i think honestly it's freaking almost 1 a.m yeah or it's it's 6 a.m <gasps> what we're gonna take a two hour nap and we're <laughs> back to work one hour actually workouts at seven join us for the morning show yep it work out at seven i'll probably go at five though that's my problem. I get up at five no matter what. 
What? Yeah. This is a side note. Have you ever seen the Netflix series, I Think You Should Leave? No. All right. I'm not saying that, though. I mean... No, 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 no. No, it's called That's I Think You Should Leave. That's a fucked up title. But it's funny. It's a guy whose skits never made it on SNL. Ah. And his... Like, all the skits are, like, so... They're great. They're silly, goofy. I think you might appreciate it. Okay, I like it. Continue. I like the sound of that. Mm-hmm. It sounds like someone I need to get to know. Have you heard of Nathan Hughes? I haven't yet, but I'm about to learn tonight. Okay, okay. They're good ones. They're good ones, buddy. I'm in. Yes. Oh, McKenna, I wanted to address. You say buddy, dude, and what else? Oh, no. You use a lot of bro terminology casually. Always have, from what I remember, right? Yeah. How did that come about? I don't know. I think I just want people to feel like they're my friends. Feel comfortable? Have yeah. you ever had other... I, I, have I, you had guys be like, hey, come on. No, do you... Is it annoying to you? No, no, no. Well, I, well, I don't so like, I don't when like I was to use younger, the word bro. I used to have uh, issues with it. Oh my God, don't, let's talk about it. Let's when dissect I was younger, it. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to be... I used to tell girls... Hey, dude, or bro, like, come on. So you'd say it back? No, I'd say don't call me that. Oh, no. When, this is when I was like 16. He hates me. McKenna, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now I'm, I'm I mean, I love, I mean, I, I embrace it. I think it's great. I think the, I, I know, I know where it comes from now. When I was 16, I was a little shit. I was a little weasel. Okay. I will say, I will say, I was, a, I never said, I never said bro. Because I don't like bro. See, I like bro. I do not um, like bro because I... F- but if a girl says bro, it's like, it doesn't make sense. No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I never use it. It was like this terminology. I'm not going to say bro, bra, blah, blah, blah. Bro, ha, ha. But I will say, oh my gosh. Dude. Dudes, I mean, nothing's wrong with any of it. But I, but I, I do I'm just say, saying when I was younger. No, no, no. I, but I freaking love this. I love this chat. Yeah, I love it because if it really if I say something that like people are like stop freaking saying that I want to know, right? So to have it as data, to have it as data, and I'll put it away in the archive. Yeah, but still like uh, tune back and do it. Right, absolutely. Go look back at the research. So recently though, like I try and dress everybody by name because I feel like now it makes if I use like a is a word like not superlative but just like a term of endearment. Right. Um, when I use that now, yeah, I feel like people think if I were to use it now, I feel like people think that I don't know their name, and so I try really hard to right not use that unless it's a patient, and then I'll be like, then I'll say it's okay, buddy, or if they're Spanish speaking, I'll say it's okay, papito. Oh, uh, that's honestly nice. Mm-hmm. You can call the white people that; they'll like it too. But I, th- yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right papito. You're right. Papito means like little. Little puppy. Little, but you say to the big pot cholesterol guys? No, no, no. I only say it to my patients that are like seven <laughs> and younger. Oh, oh, okay. If they're older than that, I'll be like, I know, S- friend. I know, I know. Senor? I actually, I, I'll say if if they're older than seven, ages seven to ten, I like won't even use the term of endearment. I'll just say, tu es muy fuerte, which means you're really strong. Or brave. Same thing. I mean, that that works for anyone. Anyways, back to terms of endearment. I try really hard. Never use the word to, uh, buddy, but I did use the word. I still use the word dude a lot. But I don't even say it just to dudes. I say it to girls as well. I'll be like, dude, can you believe blah, 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 blah. Right. But, but you can get away with it. But do you think that's like kind of like, um, be honest. Do you think that's kind of like a... Ugh? Um, I used to. When I was younger. Okay, so do you still carry that with you now? No, I don't have anything against it. I think you do. <laughs> I don't have anything against it, but it's not like my favorite. Okay, okay. Right. So, I mean, it's like um, a filler. Oh, got it. Which is why I was saying I try and You're use the names. To, I'm a filler guy. I'll throw a man. I'll throw a bro. I'll throw a... Mm, but you don't like it when gals do it. A sweetheart. Or, uh, I, mean, I hate the word sweetheart. Right, I only use it for uh, grandparents and <laughs> aunts and uncles. Well, uh, my um, best friend will call me sweetie. You cannot use it on anyone younger than 30. 
Yeah, I like kind of get triggered. I'm like, stop calling me sweetie. That it, it pisses anyone off who's younger than thirty. But yeah. if they're above sixty, they like it. Yeah, I don't know about that. I still don't like it. And I don't like honey. I don't like honey, sweetie. Um, honey, sweetie. What are other words like that? Ask them. Uh, gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous is fine. I can. I. I. I'd deal with like it has. It's got. You look gorgeous, but if they're like, "Hey, gorgeous," I'm like, Bleh. "Okay." What about darling? Mm. Darling's good. I think I'd giggle. Uh, yeah, which is a better response? Uh-huh. Okay. So, I mean, sweetheart. I mean, that that pissed me off too. I just feel like that, like... I'm like, trying to think I'm what saying, other hey, southern it's ones. Like, I, I look, like, down upon you, which... I don't know where that comes from. Like, I don't know why I think sweetheart is, like, an in, inferior type of well, like, term it's, a, it, it's like a... It's a... It's in the bless her heart category. Okay. Okay. I you would say... I would say, oh, my gosh, bless her heart all the time. And Jackie would be like, stop freaking saying that. Oh, it, well, I mean, it's... it's It cuts deep in the south. Yeah. But I'd be like, oh my gosh, like, but I would say mine genuine in the sense of like, oh, bless her heart, like that Ugh. sucks. And Jackie would be like, I kind of stop it. I feel like you're being condescending. And I'd be like, you're right. That can come across so bad. It, <laughs> honestly, I love bless her heart because it's, it's such a verse. It's like a Swiss army knife of that's fuck like, that's you. cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. That's cute would be a better way to say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. But again, I've that got some. Good combo. I've got some sailor language. I gotta. I gotta work on it because you're just a pure soul. Uh, you, I no. Okay. Okay. So I just. I recently. So I shouldn't got, feel bad. No, I recently <laughs> got my palm red. Which. Oh, so you're a palm. Okay, so I feel. I feel better about it now. No, well, let me go into this. I recently got my palm red, and she told me that I have a little bit of anger in me. Which this is actually really vulnerable of me, and I know like you're trying to like end this, but. This is a good topic. No, I'm not. Um, I, Cole and I, well, being married, being married is really hard because you are like having somebody see see you at like your most like vulnerable. Yes. Like situations. And I've realized, and I think it came from also like being in the ICU and I start, I'm somebody who's been super empathetic. And then when I was in the ICU and I had to like compartmentalize, I became super numb to feelings. And then I started to like not be able to process my feelings for a little bit, which is why I left that job. Right. And um, because I started becoming numb and like not giving two Fs about people and becoming almost like kind of sassy in a sense of like, who is that? That's not McKenna, you know? I could see that. And, and I started and I'm still working well, I, on it. I didn't see that, but. But you can see where it comes from, right? Right, right, like, right. Yeah. And, um, that would happen to anyone, I feel like. You'd feel like it, but some of these nurses are like bad asses who can handle their shat and like not have to worry about it. Yeah. You, it takes a certain Enneagram. <laughs> right. Shout out. To Shout be, out Enneagram. To be in an ICU, whether it be pediatric or normal, normal sailor, whatever, you have to have a certain personality and you have to have like a community who's going to support you in that, you know, and like encourage you to be the best that you can. Yeah. Because... I don't know. You just you, 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 need, you, you need to be around that, that positive um, community yeah. environment. Yeah, and um, y'all need to draw strength from each other. Yeah, and it started and impacting me negatively. Yeah, I can imagine. And so, anyways, I developed like I started realizing that I and the enneagram helped it yeah. me like figure it out too, is that I do have this little bit of anger that I didn't know that Absolutely. I had in an unhealthy like in my unhealthy state. Yes. Um, and so it's something that I've been working on. Absolutely. But I think it comes from never having to process negative feelings. Right. I'm there with you. And not knowing. Bottling it up. Just and bottling it up. Capping it up. And then just throwing the bottle it. out. Yeah. And it's then like, when, you're, when you like have somebody who lives with you 24 seven, they see every bit of you and. Oh yeah. And then they bring out those little things and where to one time you just like that bottle explodes. It's like that Mentos and like a Coke can yep. bottle. And it just, just like the Mentos. <laughs> exactly. And then it surprised, it surprised me. And I was like, Holy shit. Like this is something that I feel like uh, I need to work on. I so when 1000% you say, agree. So point of that was when I get angry, there's no filter. Right. Uh, Which that's, I mean, uh, that's a reaction 
from bottling it up. Yeah, which is... Which you've identified that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what you hopefully took away is you just got to talk about it. Yeah. Gotta, I got I to process my feelings before. Yeah. You got to get out there. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot. So true. To, because, uh, you know, if you feel something, you feel it. But yeah. if you speak it, you speak it and you feel it and you're able to think about it. Yeah. And then when you speak it and it surprises you, it shows you like what you feel, what you've been bottling up for a long time. Right. 1000%. And you're like, whoa. 1000%. Saying things out loud, whether it's to someone else or even just to yourself, you can learn it. I have an analogy for you. I'll take it. Have you ever heard of surface level weed picking? <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard <laughs> of surface level weed picking. All right. This is a hot, uh, not a hot take. This is just maybe a hot analogy. I'll, I'll take I'll make it quick. So growing up, I had chores. Yep. I had to pick weeds. Okay. It hurt. Sometimes my back hurt. I had bruises. Oh, it's on my hard. Head. I had it's to hard. pick weeds too. Yeah, it hurts, but yeah. it's something that needs to be done, right? Yeah, I get it done for the yard to look good. Right, exactly, and allow what the other plants to grow. Right, new growth to form. Yes, sir. Yup. So, associating that to emotions, processing negative things or negative feelings that happen coming to the root of the issue. So when you're picking right. these weeds, you don't just get the surface level. You don't, I just leaked. Sorry. If you, I, <laughs> sorry, you can use Lysol wipe, so I put down. We got it. All right. So anyways, you don't just get to the surface level, right? You don't just get the green. You have to get to the root of the issue. Yeah. Get down and dirty in that dirt. Get, get up in blisters. the roots. Yeah. Get dirty. Yeah. Figure it out. But wear gloves if you know wear you're gloves? getting the root. Exactly. Meaning that could be community. That could be, you know, like. Your your strength pillars. Yes. Whatever that may be. Yeah. Get that root. Ugh. Take it out. Yeah. Then throw it in the trash. You processed it. You done it the right Knowing where the root way. was. And then your new growth can form. I love it. That was my analogy. I love That's it. That's it. I love it so much. Thank you. And ladies and gents, if you have weeds growing in your <laughs> lawn, or if you have weeds growing in your lawn in your life, get to the root. Get to the root, baby. Mm. Because that's where growth occurs. Amen. And that's where growth starts. Oh, yes. And McKenna's hype. McKenna's good vibes. <gasps> yes, I love talking about growth. <laughs> <laughs> McKenna's so great. And, um, We've had a fantastic, wonderful, splendid, insightful, hilarious, epic evening, McKenna. I've been so, I'm so honored to be on here. Like I'm, I was thrilled. I was actually like kind of so nervous too. Well, you, you, you showed up in the prime time. You showed up in the clutch, Jordan with the three. You came in. Love it. Thank you, you for having and you, me. And you crushed it. Ladies and gents, if you enjoyed tonight's episode, Make sure you share it with your mom, mm. your dad, love him, your cousin, love your him. brother, yes, your neighbor, mm. Uncle Rick down the street. Rick, share it, share. get it to him, give him the good vibes. Hey. Everyone needs good vibes. Everyone in the world. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for viewing, watching, listening, and subscribing. If you're not uh, viewing. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're on YouTube because you might be missing out because this was a beautiful set tonight. We finally got the Hand Planet podcast dialed in in McKenna's set in history uh, with episode 49 in the books. Ooh. That a was little, a good accent. With a little bee boop. I, I'm Z a big books. accent guy. I am. What's your favorite accent? I couldn't choose. All right. I, li I like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's hard to identify them sometimes. Can you do a New York accent? Hey, I'm walking here. Hey, hey. I'm walking here. Fuck off, Eddie. <gasps> Eat yeah. my hot dog, huh? Yes. All right. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you. I'm Are you listening? I'm talking to you. You subscribed? You better subscribe. Yeah, Did you, you hit better. the like button? Mm. Hit the like button. Or else. Or else. You better do it. I'll get my mother and my father. 
and my uncle Vinny. Mm. And if you really want to help the show, go ahead and give us a good old review on Apple Podcasts. We're trying to get 100 reviews. All right. We're trying to come after Rogan. We're filling his shoes. He's getting old. He's, he's, he's almost 60. I mean, we love him. He's a legend. He's a I'm beauty. Alive. He's great. He's a just a uh, hero. But, you know, it's mm-hmm. time to step up. It's time to conquer millennial uh era well conquer we like rogan but ladies and gents respectful ladies and gents ladies and gents if you want to uh help the good old hand planet podcast give us a good old five-star review on apple Podcasts, or give us whatever you want because you love to see it and uh mckenna any final words no i'm just grateful to be on here grateful be nice to people Make sure they feel loved and be thankful that you can walk, talk, move, and breathe. Walk, talk, move, and breathe, ladies and gents. It's a blessing every day. With that being said, ladies and gents, have a great day. We're thankful for you. And we'll see your beautiful faces soon. Adios. Great. All right. Love to see you, McKenna. I like this one a lot. We crush it.